Mr. Day. My name is Linda. I'm your respiratory therapist. This is where you begin the long process of accepting the challenges ahead and start the hard work needed to ensure your recovery. One of your first big tasks will be to clear your lungs of fluids. After surgery, your body tends to hold on to extra fluid. Also, because your chest will be sore, you may not want to breathe deeply or cough, but taking deep breaths and coughing is one of the most important aspects of your recovery. You may be at risk for developing pneumonia if you do not practice breathing exercises. Then you're going to take 10 slow, deep breaths. Like to prevent this from happening, an expert in respiratory therapy will give you exercises to help you take those deep breaths. This will not be easy because your breastbone incision will make heavy breathing tough. This is one of your first big challenges. You must work through this and clear your lungs to prevent pneumonia, which is dangerous at worst and at the least can complicate your recovery. <laughs> You uh, may notice that you've got some swelling in your ankles. The next part of your recovery will be exercise. No, you're not going to be asked to do sit-ups or jog around the block just yet, although good exercise will be a key component in your long-term recovery. Right now, it's time to bring down swelling in your ankles. Your nurse or therapist will help you do these exercises that will loosen your ankles and bring down the swelling. the nurses we're going to help get him up today. With the idea that keeping active will be extremely helpful in your recovery, your nurse or physical therapist will help you take that first step out of bed. This won't be easy. You'll be sore and tired, but it's a vital step in your recovery. It may start with sitting on the edge of the bed or just getting out of bed just to sit in a chair. I want you to push with your legs and we'll lift under your arms, okay? But the sooner you do this work, the more quickly you'll recover. Three. Push, push, push. Great, great. Physical therapy will begin in the ICU and continue after you get to the step-down unit, which will happen when you no longer need constant care. Are you ready to go down? Yeah, I think so. I'm just going to let you down with your legs, okay? Okay. All right, one, two, three. Oh. Moving to the step-down unit and out of ICU is a sign that your recovery is coming along, even though you may not feel great. Feel? It's probably the first meal you can eat really well now that you can sit up. The hope is that you'll only stay in the hospital for about a week, though in some cases it may be longer. The transition out of ICU also represents your time to start taking charge of your recovery. Okay, Mr. Day, we're going to get you up to go for a walk. Walking and getting out of bed or a chair will help your body become more flexible and get you started on minor exercise. Still, keep in mind that the incision in your breastbone will take six to eight weeks to heal. Your physical therapist and your nurses will show you how to protect that incision while still remaining mobile. The key is to keep pressure off your breastbone in everything that you do. It's time to go home. Though you may miss the food and decor of your hospital room, it will be great to be home. That doesn't mean it's time to lie in bed all day. In fact, the opposite is true. To help in your physical healing and your emotional recovery, it's vitally important to stay active, to build a routine. I think I came back here for about two months um, with uh, physical therapy twice a week, um, and that was on an outpatient part. Um, you had to come back for the first month you had to come each week for a biopsy, a heart biopsy. Then it got to be every other week you had a biopsy. Then it got to be you know, for once a month, okay, and then every three months. But um, the thing is, taking your medicine, acting like you have good sense, trying to eat the right kind of foods, because at first you don't have any appetite at all, and then all of a sudden you go, oh, this does taste good. So the thing for me is, you know, trying to keep the weight under control. They managed to get me into acute rehab here, which when I first went to telemetry, I really wasn't strong enough to, but within the three to four days up there, I built up my strength, was able to get out of bed and develop, redevelop the manipulative skills I needed with the intense rehab that I was put through. By the time I left on the fifth day, 
I had walked 25 steps without a walker. I was able to climb steps so I could get into the house that we live in and go up to my bedroom. So I'd made up my mind and told her I didn't want a hospital bed at home. I wanted to sleep in my own bed. I figure those five days probably took two months off of my recovery. While it's not time to mow the lawn or go back to work right away, you can take that first shower. Just keep the water from being too hot and make sure someone is nearby in case you have a problem. It won't be hard to forget, but you've got to keep an eye on your incisions. At times, they may be bruised, itchy, numb, and sore. After a shower, pat them dry and don't use lotion or powder. Check them every day for redness, swelling, or drainage. Be sure to let your doctor know if any of these signs are present. Tasks around the house are a good thing as long as they're not too strenuous. Within several weeks, you may return to light work and even sexual activity. So much has changed and so much can remain the same. What's changed is that your heart is healing and your blood is now flowing the way it should. Still, you have family and friends and the work you do that can often make you forget what you've been through. As the weeks progress and your breastbone incision heals, you will still notice it. Sharp pain may come and go and changes in the weather will affect how it feels. Still, the pain will feel much different than angina. Regular visits to your healthcare team will ensure the healing is going well. Don't miss those appointments or feel they are not necessary, even if you're feeling like a million bucks. After you have been cleared by your surgeon, you may resume normal activities. Still, your lifestyle will have to go through some changes. If you smoke before surgery, quit. Smoking is a significant contributor to heart disease. If you ate poorly, change your habits, load up on fruits and vegetables, and give up fried foods and heavy sweets. If you did not exercise before surgery, now is the time to begin. This will not only help you to feel better, but also will reduce the risk of coronary heart disease. And remember, your best advocates are members of your family. Take advantage of what they can do for you. I think the biggest thing is you can't be afraid to ask questions. You have to ask, even if you might think in the back of your head, boy, this is not going to be a very bright question, to question them, to ask. You have to ask for options. You have to ask for alternatives. And remember, you've gone through what is in many ways the experience of your life. You could find yourself depressed and pondering life and death issues. Don't do this alone. There are issues that must not be kept inside. Talk about it with family and friends, with others who have gone through this, with a counselor. My husband was always there, my son was always there, my sister was always there, the support was there. Sometimes I had to calm them down, and sometimes they had to calm me down. Tremendous advances in technology and education have put you in a position to add quality time to your life. But all that technology and all that expertise will only go as far as your own efforts and the support of your friends and your family. Ultimately, that is what will lead to your recovery and allow you to live a fulfilling life after open heart surgery.